This is like my fourth huge mug of coffee today. So, uh, this is me. As you might know, I'm from Finland. And as you might also know, Finns drink bucket loads of coffee. In fact, we are the number one coffee drinkers in the world, consuming eight or nine cups a day in average, with some locals consuming as many as 30 cups per day. Not surprisingly, I too have always drank a lot of coffee. Whenever I drink too much coffee, like today, well, I get super anxious. I mean, is there any point to this excessive coffee consumption? But that all changed one day in February. I was downing my 18th cup of coffee, my hands were shaking, my back was sweating and my mind was racing when I suddenly came up with a question. Maybe uh, maybe if I cut back on coffee, uh, I, I would feel less anxious. But I, I, I can't just quit cold. The, the withdrawal symptoms would be just... just Horrific. And like a sign from above, I received an email from Path of Cha, a company that sells high quality tea, a company that's on a mission to change the way we drink tea. Now they offered to send me some of their teas to try them out, and I was like, Tea? Tea. Yeah, yeah actually, that, that could be a good alternative to coffee. I've, I've read it has some L-theanine or I don't know something that makes you less anxious. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. This box has over two hundred dollars worth of tea inside of it. Let's have a look. Right. So we've got white tea. Some sort of black tea, I think. Tenka Fukumashi uh, matcha tea, green tea, and oolong tea. And then we have uh, this. Uh, uh, I'm not quite sure what it is yet, so just put it here. And then finally, all kinds of teaware. But the thing is, I have no idea how to use these things. So the first thing I need to do is to learn how to make tea uh, the proper way. There are many ways to brew tea. The simplest and probably the worst way is to just dunk a tea bag into hot water. Then there's the western style, where you basically brew the leaves in a large teapot. The grandpa style is when you just forget about all the pots and kettles and you brew the tea leaves right there on the bottom of your mug. The most ancient method, however, is to simply boil the leaves for a long time, usually adding some herbs and stuff into the mix. And you can also brew the tea by pouring cold water over tea leaves and leaving it in the fridge for several hours to steep. And then there's the most complex and ceremonial of all, the Kombu Cha, which is a type of Chinese tea ceremony which involves accurately measured water temperatures, rinsing and brewing timed to the second. And that's exactly how I wanted to brew my tea, but of course I didn't know how to do it. I'm not really sure is that... No, I think you just brew it here. This is probably for roasting. I think this goes... Maybe? What is this? It's fun because it's Kung Fu. So it's like how to brew coffee. Kung Fu style! Fortunately, Path of Cha actually has their own YouTube channel and they have tutorials there for people like me who are not familiar with the stuff, so... Alright, I think we're ready to brew. It's a, it's a different flavor. It's kind of I well, I don't know anything about tea, so I can't really tell how it's different, but it's different than when you get it from a tea bag. It's nice. Second infusion. It's a maybe a little bit less earthy. A little bit a little bit less earthy, you know. It's a very mindful practice. Let's do the third one. It's so funny. It looks like, you know, actual leaves. Did you know that there's over 3,000 different teas? I didn't know that. 
didn't. I don't know if it's the tea, but I, I feel pretty cheerful already. Fifth infusion. How much tea have I drank? Two of these. So much tea, though. But I can, I would definitely uh, say that I, I feel something already. Kind of cheer, cheerful and, uh, I don't know, you know, just a, a bit high. Now, th this is what's called tea drunk. Whoa. You know, I didn't even know such a state of mind exists. Whoa. But as Path of Cha explains in their blog, tea drunk is the feeling we get from the psychoactive components of Camellia sinensis. And when you're tea drunk, you're uplifted, happy, giggly, silly, and relaxed. And I would say that describes my feelings pretty well. I've never had anything like that with coffee. Yeah, I feel, I feel uh, pretty cheerful. <laughs> A bit high after nine infusions. And then after I had mastered Kung Fu Cha, uh, I just kept learning new stuff about tea. For instance, I learned that this is a tea cake, where the tea leaves are in a compressed form, as it is then easier to store and age the tea for decades. But I don't know which tea it is, and I don't know how to use this. I also learned that you need to make holes in it to remove pieces of it and to make tea out of it. And then I learned that I would need a puer needle for it, but I only had a damn screwdriver for it. Oh, he's already not looking good. <laughs> oh, that's already six grams. Well, that's some really strong puer tea, but... <coughs> it's probably not good that I'm drinking this now. It's already like 6 p.m. What, it's 6.30 already? No sleep tonight. Now, how do I store this? <laughs> how do I... Now it just looks like a diaper. All the tea and juicy ass are gonna hate me. No, but you're trying your best. But I'm so bad at no, this. It's okay. I've noticed that tea tends to make me more like cheerful, but it's not the same kind of a, a rush that coffee gives you with all the jitters and stuff. And there's actually a good reason for that. See, both coffee and tea have caffeine in them. Coffee just has more of it per cup. Caffeine is the thing that makes you feel alert and energetic, but it can also make you feel anxious and jittery if you consume too much of it. 400 milligrams is often quoted to be the maximum safe dosage. However, tea has a secret weapon against jitters, an amino acid called L-theanine. L-theanine keeps jitters away by increasing the levels of the calming neurotransmitters called serotonin and gamma aminobutyric acid. Yeah, I probably didn't say that right. When you combine caffeine and L-theanine, you get a cocktail that makes you both alert and eases your mind at the same time, which is pretty awesome. Now, uh, when I learned about these awesome properties of tea, I... I got a bit excited. In fact, I got so excited and I drank so much tea that after only three weeks, I was already running out of Path of Chaw's tea. So um, yeah, there's that. But I wanted to ration this premium tea for as long as I could. So I started using tea bags. I must say this tastes like water after that high quality tea. Or not water, but I mean, it doesn't have uh, the plethora of aroma that the, the high quality tea had. And you know, wh what is that? Why do tea bags lack the flavor? Well, to answer that, we need to go back in time. Early 1900s, Thomas Sullivan, a tea merchant from New York, was looking for ways to cut production costs. He did this by sending loose tea in small hand-sewn silk pouches instead of costly tins, which were the standard at the time. His clients, confused by his new packaging, started throwing the bags with tea in hot water. At that very moment, Sullivan realized he had hit a jackpot, and he started marketing these bagged teas in 1908. However, bagging the tea leaves came with the cost of flavor. See, in order for a tea leaf to fully release its flavor, it needs room to expand. But because tea in bags had less room to open up, the quality was diminished. So the merchants came up with a solution. They started using smaller leaves, known as dust, which is the lowest ranking that tea can achieve. And that is why tea bags usually don't have high quality tea. In other words, if you've only ever tasted tea that has been brewed with one of these things, uh, there's a chance that you have missed out on a lot of amazing flavors. Another thing you miss by using a tea bag is uh, the brewing process itself, which is a bummer 
because there's something really mindful about the brewing process. I often prepare tea the first thing in the morning as part of my morning routine and spend a good amount of time planning the day in my notebook and reading books, all while brewing more tea. It was a really mindful way to start my day and it made me more cheerful and alert. But as awesome as tea can be, I still didn't want to completely cut out coffee from my life. So I've now spent almost 100 days without coffee. I think it's like day 95. But to end this experiment, I'm actually gonna drink coffee for one week. Just to make it even more clear for myself the differences between drinking coffee and drinking tea. First sip in 95 days. It tastes really bitter. Oh! Your behavior is a little funny. You don't think I'm funny every day? Well... <laughs> Whew, yeah, okay. I'm getting all itchy because I'm so sweaty. You know, right? Mm. Getting a bit sweaty and then itchy. Mm. No one else has that. Like overall sweatiness all over your body, no? Mm. No? Anything else? <laughs> Can yeah. I sing something? Baby, 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 oh! You've been scratching your throat a lot. It's super red. Are you like really nervous or something? Did you drink a little too much coffee? Baby, baby, oh! The effect from coffee is just so much more overwhelming. I went to bed at 11.30 p.m. But according to Whoop, I only started sleeping half past 3 a.m. I just couldn't sleep at all. Yeah. So yeah, coffee kept me awake throughout the night. <laughs> so to summarize, after 100 days of drinking mainly tea and not drinking coffee, here's what I think. The effect provided by coffee is like being kicked in the ass by a military officer. You know, it sure wakes me up, but I don't want to be ass kicked by an officer all the time. So my aim in the future is to not drink coffee every day, but to consume it strategically. For instance, before intense exercise or if I have serious sleep deprivation. Tea, on the other hand, is like being uh, gently encouraged to do something by a loving grandmother. You know, it gives you a subtle boost, but it's not like you would need to start sweating over it. I think tea is a great way for me to start my day, as it can be part of a mindful morning routine. So if you are a heavy uh, coffee drinker and you've never roamed the land of tea, I highly encourage you to switch from tea to coffee for a while and experience the difference yourself. You might be surprised how it can affect your mood and reduce anxiety. So if you do want to give it a try, here's what you can do. Step one, take your coffee machine and hide it under your couch. Step two, click the link in the description to check out Path of Cha's high quality tea selection and order some tea. Step three, while you wait for the order, throw your remaining coffee out the window. Step four, once the order arrives, learn Kung Fu Cha by watching YouTube tutorials. Path of Cha has some good ones. Step five, enjoy your first brew. Or if you're like me, your first nine back-to-back -back brews. Of course, you don't really need to buy the stuff from Path of Job, but they, they are a great option. I mean, in addition to their tea products being great, they also seem to be really, really nice people. They even sent me a handwritten letter to wish me luck on my, my tea journey. How awesome is that? So, um, I hope your coffee machine fits under your couch. Thanks, bye.